Hello everyone, today I'm going to attempt to make a mugwort beer, a recipe I found online by Pascal Bador. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but anyway, here's what I'm using to do it. I have 40 grams of mugwort, I have three large lemons and one small lemon, about a kilo of brown sugar, some English ale yeast, uh, some yeast nutrients. I'm only going to be using half a packet of yeast as well. Uh, and a few other bits of equipment, such as a funnel, a bung with an airlock, a hydrometer, a thermometer, a mesh strainer, and an empty plastic bottle for when I attempt to take the gravity later, and a large bucket full of sanitizer. And the other piece of equipment you'll need is some sort of fermentation vessel. I just have here what is a five litre demijohn. Oh, it's just a large five litre glass bottle. Um, if you don't have one of these, what I would recommend doing is just going and getting a five litre bottle of spring water from the supermarket. Um, same as if you don't have a bung or a airlock for the top. You could use a balloon with a pin pricked in the top, although I would recommend getting a bung in an airlock. It's a lot easier and sort of, um, you can watch your progress through the bubbles of the carbon dioxide escaping as well, um, just to monitor your fermentation. And the first thing you're going to want to do in this process is take your sanitizing bucket and sanitize everything you're going to be using. It's probably the most important part actually. Um, after that, uh, you want to take your mugwort and your lemons, cut the lemons up, put them in a saucepan. If you've got a big stock pot, use that, um, up to five litres. I didn't, so I used two small saucepans and halved it. Four, well, four litres all up, two litres in each saucepan. Um, and then I did another litre of just plain water with the sugar just to dissolve it. Um, and then you want to essentially wait for that to cool once it's boiled for a half hour. So let it simmer over for a half hour after that, wait till it gets down to around 20 to 25 degrees Celsius, um, and then it is ready for the demijohn. And I should mention a note about the water. I'm using Brisbane tap water because it's of a pretty good quality, I find. Um, if you want, you can use spring water. I, I boiled it for a half hour anyway, so I'm happy with it at this point. Um, if you don't have a demijohn and you are using the bottle of spring water, use that by all means. So the first saucepans reach the correct temperature. It's around 20-ish degrees, just above. So now we're gonna strain it through this into the demijohn. And so you'll notice I've got a towel down on the table, which is probably a good idea too. And removing the lemons from the saucepan first was also probably a good move. You want to get your mugwort out and give it a good squeeze as well. You can use a spoon for this, I just use my hand. So you get all the flavour out. So the taste of this, just brewed as a tea over half an hour, is extremely bitter. Um, but the smell is quite nice. Um, you get the lovely kind of lemony flavour and then the rest is almost just like a really strong black tea sort of smell. Alright, first lot done. And now we put the second pot in. If you end up coming up a bit short on this, just add more water to it. I'm pretty sure this is still going to be quite flavoursome. Uh, as a side note, mugwort was used up until about 600 CE. 
um, as the chief bittering agent in beer. Um, how it gets its name, mug meaning mug or cup, and wort meaning plant, so it's a plant for brewing. Um, after that, hops became the more sort of commercial thing. Uh, beer was getting shipped around the world and uh, they needed to preserve it a bit better. And mugwort still works well as a preservative, but hops was a lot better. So now we have our sugar mixtures cooled to the right temperature. So we'll add that in as well. Carefully. It's very full this pot. Pretty much where we want it actually, and pretty close to, you still want kind of a bit of neck room uh, for the gas to escape. The way yeast works is uh, it feeds on the sugar and it produces two byproducts and then dies. Uh, one of those byproducts is the alcohol, hence the beer. The other byproduct is carbon dioxide, which will escape bubbling up through the airlock. Um, I might actually add just a touch more water. We can add a touch more later if we want to. Um, the next thing we want to add is I'm going to put in, it's around five litres, so I'm going to add around uh, two teaspoons, just a regular teaspoon you stir your tea with. About two of that of yeast nutrients. If you don't have yeast nutrients, uh, I really should have added this to the sugar. Uh, if you don't have yeast nutrients, you can add raisins like they did back in the old days. Uh, your yeast don't get as much out of it, but it's better than nothing. What that does is just add a bit of nitrogen to the mix, which is something else handy for yeast to feed on. So you don't have to be exact with the measurement of that. Same as with the yeast, uh, the more you put in, Possibly the higher alcohol percentage you will get, depending on. Um, but you can just add a tiny bit of yeast in; they'll still reproduce in the right conditions. Actually, before we do pitch our yeast, the one thing we do want to do is aerate. So, sorry, we'll take our bung. Actually, just pour a touch more water in just to get the nutrients and make a mess. Get it into the thing. So we want to put our bung in, seal her in tight. And what we need to do now is mix everything and make sure it's well aerated so the oxygen is kind of come around. So it also helps with the yeast. So this is just a matter of shaking the hell out of it pretty much. Until it's well mixed. So generally you should probably do this for about a minute or so. Longer if you've got the patience and the energy. So now we want to pitch our yeast. By pitching, I just mean putting it in the top here. So like I said earlier, I'll probably use about half of this. Um, one of these usually does around 30 liters you can get out of it. So 11 and a half grams. So I'm putting in around five to six grams, I guess. Just pour it in. Some people like to hydrate their yeast first, which is a great way to find out if your yeast is active, if you've had it sitting around for a while. Uh, I bought this yesterday, yesterday, day before. Um, so I'm pretty confident it's fresh and it's another step I don't have to worry about then. So just a touch more. Check and make sure that's about half a packet. And so once you've got your other half, uh, you want to put that in the fridge as well. Uh, and then that should keep for another few days if you want to make another brew of some sort. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it yet. Um, I 
Next thing you want to do is take your airlock, fill it full of sanitizer. So this is the airlock here, and we want to put it, well, actually put a bit more water in there. That's better. Into your bung, so your bung will have a hole in it. If not, just put the balloon with the hole over the top. And we put it in there. And what we're going to do is just gyrate that just so the yeast kind of breaks up a wee bit like that. And there you have it. That's pretty much all you have to do. From then on, you put it in a dark place. Um, about 10 days, give or take. Um, You'll see carbon dioxide bubbles coming up through this. And that's sort of when you know it started fermenting, when it stops, and this thing stops bubbling. Um, that's a sign usually it has finished fermenting. And if you're an absolute fool, you'll forget to take your gravity as well. Um, at this point, you would have poured out two litres, rested your hydrometer in it, and made a note of what was on there. Um, that will usually give you an indication of what sort of percentage of alcohol you're going to get. Please forgive me, this is my first instructional video and it's been a long afternoon waiting for things to and cool. So there you have it. Hopefully I'll be able to do another video soon. I can show you how this goes. Um, the next process after this is bottling. Very easy. Um, there's no need to do a secondary rack like you might in cider or mead if you're familiar with that. Um, the recipe just calls for bottling, um, including a small carbonation, so a small amount of sugar in each bottle. This will spark any extra yeast and make your drink fizzy when you open it. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. If you like this kind of thing, um, you can send me suggestions for other things you'd like to try, or you'd like me to try. Um, apart from that, give it a go. Brewing's quite easy. Um, like I say, I've made cider and I've made mead. Never made a beer, and most beer purists will probably be after me for this, but anyway, hopefully it'll just be a fun drink and we'll see you next time.